Hello everybody, it's Monkey Puzzle, and welcome back to Monkey Wrenching the Beast. Here in Feed the Beast Land, Dire Wolf 20 Pack version 5.01. Um, really enjoying ourselves still, super excited, brains bursting with ideas of all kinds of good stuff to do. I've got lists and lists of things uh, to do. Today is going to be mostly nuts and bolts though, because our main power system at the... Uh, Glacier Warehouse is has been nerfed and no longer functions. Uh, we're in the savanna base right now. I got a nice little wither skull head on the wall. <laughs> Slowly roasting it from the inside with this torch. Uh, and over here is one leaf block of a silverwood tree, which is a new thumbcraft tree, or new to me, um, which uh, each one of them has a aura node. Aura, uh, the aura is the basically the pool of magical energy that we can draw from. Uh, thinking about getting into thumbcraft pretty quick. That's one of the things I want to get into. Uh, but today it's going to be about lava and pipes and and uh, tesseracts. Uh, but uh, out here, I want to show you a couple things. Uh, First, I finally have decorated our entrance up, like I said I would. Uh, hid the uh, trip wire and the uh, redstone a little bit, and this made it look uh, more fancy and and uh, yeah, whatever you want to call it, whatever <laughs> adjectives you want to put it on it. I like it. Um, the uh, trap door itself seems to uh, not be working as well for some reason. I don't know if the timing has gotten changed or I'm just being clumsy. Uh, it's gotten a little harder to get in. Uh, ah, see? So I think I gotta do a little work on that. I uh, wanna use some red power. There we go. Finally made it back in. It was always a little awkward with multiple clap claps anyway, but uh, now it's gotten worse. Um, Something about the update. Uh, it's probably just the regular Minecraft update and the timing of the redstone and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make some of those new redstone circuits and uh, put a delay in here. But I'm not going to do that today. Um, for now, <laughs> we can just go like that and <laughs> walk in and it'll close itself. Um, but anyway, I just want to show you my fancy decoration on it. Um, but uh, let me see. Let's turn on our little gravi suit. <laughs> Woo! Come on. You can do it. And let's fly this way a little bit. Not that we have to fly, but it's fun. Uh, why else am I wearing the thing besides breathing underwater and jumping up really high? And Ooh, it's one of you guys. <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of hunting, um, the purpose of which I'll tell you. But I managed to get a lot of brains in the process. I just can't... Uh, I don't get enough of... Uh, Knocking those guys and <laughs> getting their brains. <laughs> uh, over here, I wanted to show you a couple new features that uh, came with the Thomcraft World Regeneration. Uh, part of which was trees. So over here, we've got this fancy cobwebby tree that apparently um, has a spawner and a chest underneath. Uh, we'll check that out in a bit, but I'm not going to do it right now. I don't really want to mess with any spiders. I've got all my leaves on fast graphics right now just to keep the frame rate up while I'm recording. So sorry if it's a little blocky. I, I like the fancy graphics, but feed the beast, man. It's demanding. I have to put up a donation link on my channel pretty soon because uh, FPS suffers from this game, but uh, we're still managing. Um, and this... While I'm complaining about FPS, I'm staring at this beautiful, magical tree, the Silverwood, uh, which is another Thomcraft thing. And this is, uh, apparently each one of these has an Aura node within it. Um, and I really want to uh, cut it down, not to cut it down, but to get uh, saplings. But I'm really afraid I won't get any. They're really rare uh, to give saplings. and. The, uh, you know, I don't want to be rid of it. Um, so maybe I'll go find some far away, uh, which I've seen some of, but I left them alone, and try to get saplings from those. Nilo told me about this uh, neat thing you can make called a grafter that uh, apparently Direwolf claimed gave a guaranteed sapling. Uh, uh, let's make a couple because they break really fast. Uh, for every leaf block. Oops. Um, we'll make two. Uh, but apparently they only work, we found out later, they only work on trees 
that have gone through forestry machines. Because if we try to break that, uh, we're definitely not getting a guaranteed sapling at all. Um, and these ones, neither. And then you only get a few uses out of it. Um, but uh, let's see if we go to the, uh, yeah, derpy derp. Uh, if we go to the, um, the old forestry machine over there, get my fingers on the controls. I get used to the, all these new things I can do. Wow, like that. <laughs> Not always as graceful at it as I'd like to be yet. Now these, huh, it doesn't work on those either. Oh, there we go, that's one. Well, I'm no, no, I'm not too thrilled about the grafter. Uh, anyway, let's get back to the uh, glacier warehouse and do the things we need to do over there. Here we are. That was easy. So, uh, the main thing we need to deal with, and why this is going to be the focus of today's episode, is because our power core here uh, no longer functions. Uh, magma crucibles were nerfed in the update. Uh, I haven't taken apart here to do a test, um, which I'm not complaining about. Uh, it was kind of too much, too good to be true anyway. Uh, basically, if you didn't follow my earlier episodes, I was generating lava with magma crucibles because if you use these magmatic engines that run on lava, uh, one bucket of lava in these would melt four netherrack into lava. So for every one bucket of lava you would get uh, you'd get four so that was a three hundred percent profit which meant just by feeding it netherrack uh, you could have basically infinite lava on you know one level it was the uh, quadrupler um, but it was basically exponential so I put like five buckets of naturally spawned lava in here to start with and ended up with tanks and tanks full uh, all from netherrack so, yeah, you know, that was like a little too good to be true, and I'm sure that's why they nerfed it, so you couldn't just have infinite power from that, because everybody was doing it, because it was uh, so easy and good. Uh, you did have to mine netherrack, so it wasn't absolutely for free, and I was kind of uh, validating it to myself by uh, saying, well, you know, when you light netherrack on fire, it burns forever, so there's probably some energy within it, and you were just releasing that. Um, so, yeah, we need uh, to get some lava in here otherwise, and so I have a plan, I have a plan, and eventually, which I'll tell you about in one second, eventually I want to get some other forms of power going um, that are a little bit more quote-unquote legit, uh, that are a little bit more sustainable and, you know, kind of pu putting into it to get out of it, um, and the consensus seems to be from a lot of different YouTubers I've seen that that power source is biofuel. Uh, you generate it yourself, you create the products of it, you grow it, um, and you can create these self-sustaining cycles that make sense of uh, taking the saplings or the sugar cane or the wheat or whatever and fermenting them and distilling them and running your stuff off of that. Um, and my head is I, full of ideas for uh, variations on the tree farm uh, you can set up your basic forestry tree farm with the arboretum and the logger. That's a little color by numbers though, and I want to try to do something different. And also, for the amount the logger can uh, cut down, it's actually pretty small and inefficient. Uh, but anyway, I could talk a long time about that, but uh, you know, my I, I am thinking about ideas with deployers to plant the trees and bone mill them, or maybe program a turtle to plant them, or or play with the uh, Steve Carts thing that plants. I saw a dire wolf's tree farm, and I just thought it was so fun and goofy. <laughs> Wanted to do something on that, but maybe a little bit more elaborate and use the logger in it as well. Um, but for now, uh, we're going to get lava back in here, and basically we're going to do what I was avoiding. We're going to just take it from the lakes in the nether. But rather than try to do that whole liquid transposer into uh, cans or capsules or uh, whatever you call them um, and sending them over uh, through nether chests and pulling them back out and putting them back through liquid transposers to get the stuff out of them, uh, in the update, uh, when thermal expansion takes, it also gives back. And they've got this thing now called 
the Tesseract, which I learned about a couple days ago through uh, Malkuth 1974, and uh, I was coming uh, home to do it today, and I watched uh, Aaron plays Technic uh, right before I um, sat down to do this, and he was putting one in as well, although he was doing it with energy. Uh, so they come in three forms, the energy, the liquid tesseract, and the item tesseract, and basically they're, these are just like transport pipes devices or devices to transport things that come from pipes and put them back into pipes on the other side um, so they're like basically like uh, like ender chests for stuff for liquid for energy yeah so they save some of the work of, of, of you know like I said the transposers and the cans and all that um, and just send them either uh, extra dimensionally or intra dimensionally uh, and you know, I think they're a little too easy, a little little OP, but uh, hey, that's the nature of Feed the Beast <laughs> is to be as OP as you can be. Uh, case in point, right here. So why not? Uh, and we'll do the other later, because uh, you know, with our life of leisure from doing all this, we'll need something else to do, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's what they look like. Uh, that was the energy one. We're going to make this one, which is the liquid one. So we're going to need some copper and some silver and some tin. Uh, one of these pneumatic servos. No big deal. And the last part of these is the frame. Uh, so that is... Uh, let me see. We want to make that. Uh, not too bad. That's uh, hardened glass, tin, and a diamond. So we're going to make two of these. One to output and one to input. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's see, we got everything we need. I don't think there's anything special in here. Uh, let's look one more time. That's that. No Electrum or anything. Uh, but speaking of Electrum, uh, I want to get some ready. I've got some uh, silver and some gold uh, macerating over here. There's some gold, uh, and some silver, and some silver and some gold. Oh yeah. Yeah, getting the electrum going because I uh also going to use this opportunity to totally revamp uh some of the uh, stuff in here. I want to make uh liquidux and redstone energy conduits for my stuff here. Liquidux are basically just a smarter liquid transporting pipe uh, that more so than these uh, gold waterproof pipes that come with Buildcraft and they don't need the um, the redstone engine on the end of them uh, they do need a redstone signal but uh, we'll save a little visual work on the computer maybe help the FPS a little bit and they're just smarter and they transport more um, and the uh, redstone uh, conduit I believe it's called is also a smarter energy transport thing that comes with um, thermal expansion uh, they're smarter and they know how to shut off they don't infinitely store power and blow up like these can uh, if we left these on like this and then forgot about it these would eventually just go kablooey and if you get any little circle in your system um, they uh, they also have a really hard time with that. You can see how that energy line's already getting fatter. Uh, these will never know when to stop giving energy, but apparently if it's hooked up with the energy conduit, it might. Uh, but uh, in here, we're going to put our uh, dust. So let's go ahead and do that, our electrum dust. And the cool thing about these induction smelters is you also get this slag here. Uh, if you take this slag, and you put it in a furnace, uh, you get rock wool, which is like a, uh, it's like wool, um, but it doesn't burn. So if you want to work with fancy colors, but not have your house be totally flammable, there it is, uh, light gray rock wool, which can be dyed any color that wool can be dyed. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, going to have some things we can do with that. So it's nice to have an excuse to use the, uh, the induction smelter. Uh, and it's also very fast too. Uh, so anyway, uh, we're going to need that electrum to make the liquiducts. And I've actually made one liquiduct right here. I put it on my uh, kerosene tank that comes from the coal coke uh, uh, coke oven here. 
um, because the uh, th that got full before. I'd been making a bunch of cold coke just to have for later, and also to make some kerosene, uh, which I'm going to need to do some railcraft stuff, and uh, it can also be a fuel in itself. And the amount in the tank kept glitching. I actually should have like twice as much. And I didn't know if it was the tank or the pipe or what. So I've changed the pipe and now it seems to be building up just fine. So yeah, that's a liquiduct right there. Um, and we'll get into that. Uh, but first, let's build our um, tesseracts. tesseracts. So let me see. Uh, let me grab a few materials and I'll meet you back there. Okay, I'm back and I got what I need, I think. And uh, oh yeah, I forgot to show you this little test I did that proved that the uh, magma crucibles got nerfed. Uh, basically, I took this apart, I picked up the magma crucible, and I put it back down so there was no stored energy in it. And I put uh, five, no, four buckets of lava in here, one, two, three, four, which is all it could take. And then I went to see how much lava would be produced. It had as much. Uh, I, put, I think I had eight uh, netherrack in here uh, to start with, so I'm pretty sure that it made five uh, buckets of lava from four. Let's check it out. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Hey. Gosh darn it. I want to take it. Huh. That's weird. Oh, because I don't have any room. <laughs> That's a good reason. Okay. Five. Yep there it's gone. Um, so that's a 20% profit uh, whereas before it was like a 300% profit so I'd have to uh, mine five blocks in of uh, five netherrack blocks uh, for every bucket of lava we earn which is just too slow and it can't even fill up fast enough to be practical anyway I have to go AFK to let that fill up so not gonna do it doesn't work it's nerfed um, and that's about where the figures are for people who want to know. Now that I've shown you that, let's get back to this. Uh, I'm letting this run for a purpose. <laughs> I want to show you why one of the reasons why we need to change to energy conduit, uh, which we shall see in a second, just for the fun of it. Um, and there was a reason why I was doing that Electrum first, uh, which I may have said already. Uh, let's grab it here. Um, is because this is these two things right now are full of melted redstone and we need the energy conduit anyway um, but we need to empty these and use that stuff and maybe there's some way to pump that out but we might as well use it for what it's good for so let's make a good old stack of um, how much do we get for that? Oh, we get four uh, let's start with a half stack because I don't know if I have enough hardened glass for everything else and hopefully that's enough to use up uh, all that molten redstone. So let's go to the uh, liquid transposer, which is that one, and put these in there. Um, and this will actually might help keep these from blowing up. That's too bad. <laughs> I wanted to show you that. Um, but here we go. We're getting our redstone energy conduits. And then I'm going to redo the wiring with those, and we'll be much better off. We got those. Oh, and it's going to take quite a few of these. Um, I'm going to finish this and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, all done with that. I think we have a lifetime supply of uh, redstone energy conduit. <laughs> so that's good. Now, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to um, actually melt some ender pearls. Uh, and we're going to need eight to start with. It takes four to make each tesseract. So let's go ahead and put them in the magma crucible. Never thought I'd do this. <laughs> and while that's happening, let's go ahead back to that recipe for the frames for the Tesseract. Uh, let's go back to that. And here it is, the Tesseract frame. So let's just put that in there for my poor old memory. And of course, I don't have the hardened glass on me. Let me grab that. It's right there. We're still making a bunch more of it. Okay, um, because I like it. And back to that and back there we go take it over there okay so we're gonna make two of these we said we need one to send and one to receive uh, let's go ahead like that there we go two tesseract frames and oh tin nuggets no we're not gonna do that there we go okay and then uh, how's this doing okay that's all done so hopefully that's enough that was eight so let's see what it does and 
while we're doing this, we're also uh, using up the last of the lava in this pipe and in there so that uh, those would be nice and empty when I exchange them for the liquiducts. So let's see the first one of these. Fill up. Kaboom. Uh, that's all it takes. And that's called an unattuned tesseract. Now, what happened? I thought I had two. Oh, it just disappears it. Okay. That always gets me. I'm <laughs> like, where'd it go? <laughs> Where's my frame? And here comes the second. Perfect. Yeah, exactly four each. So those are unattuned tesseract frames. And then to tune them to whatever they're going to be, uh, then we have to put stuff around it. So we're going to do the liquid one because we're moving lava. So, oh yeah, and I didn't make my pneumatic servo. Uh, and I need to get some redstone. One thing I don't have, uh, but I have it there. Um, okay, let's try to get it again. So let's make our pneumatic servo. Uh, that's just going to be some iron, uh, which I think is also <laughs> something else I don't have. But I will in a second. And ta-da! I've got some now. So there's the iron and the redstone. And then we're going to have two pneumatic servos. So last bit is this. So we need some... What was that? <laughs> some copper, which I will also have in a second. Abracadabra! I've got copper and I've got two unattuned tesseract frames and two pneumatic servos and some silver and some tin. I think my brain's in a tesseract today too, but uh, hopefully that's a good thing. So we got two liquid tesseracts. So now we're going to set these up. Uh, one of them is going to go right here. Now the thing I need to learn is that can they output directly to a valve or do I need to put a pipe uh, between it? Um, so we're going to need to do some trials. and. Uh, by the way, I'm sure you guys saw before that my gravitation engine was on for a very long time. And you were like, turn that thing off, but I couldn't hear you. Uh, okay, so we'll put that there. Uh, we might need a pipe to go down to it. I've never used these things before, and I'm going to turn my engine off now. Um, hey, we're going to have plenty of power again in a second. Um, but uh, we have to set it on a frequency. So uh, we don't have any other things now, so let's give it a 1. And then this is going to be the, uh, uh, we're going to call it the uh, extra dimensional lava. <laughs> How's that for a name? Uh, it has to be one word. Lava. Okay. And then this one, we can save it. We can set it. Uh, I guess we set it. And we save that, I guess. Um, okay. That looks good to me. I don't know exactly how that goes, um, but uh, we'll figure it out in a minute. So now I'm going to need to go to the nether, and I'm going to need to pump lava into one of these on the other side. So I'm going to make a pump, uh, which I don't need to show you. You guys could have seen those before. I'm just going to make one of uh, these. Uh, good old-fashioned buildcraft pump and I'm going to figure out some power for it. Uh, probably just have a magmatic engine actually powering it itself uh, just in a little loop. Um, and then we're going to send some over here. So I'm going to get ready for that. I'll meet you in the nether. <laughs> just missed showing it to you. Kablooey. It's a nice explosion. They don't tend to blow anything else up, but you, you, know, you lose all that gold and stuff, uh, which I was willing to lose for demonstration purposes. But actually this time it was just an accident. <laughs> If we leave these on long enough, too, they're going to turn off from the heat, uh, but that's okay. Before I go over there, actually, two more things I want to show you on this side is, one, uh, let's make some liquiducts, because we're going to need some, maybe. Uh, we're going to make a whole bunch, because we're going to use lots of them. So there's another large supply of liquiducts. Uh, so there's that. And then the other thing is, over here at the... Uh, Savannah base. Point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me grab something over here. One of these days I'll learn how to run around extra fast. Uh, right 
Here, let's grab a new bow and let's enchant it now that I've got 33 levels because this is still the best range weapon I know. Um, maybe there's some good ones. If you know some in Feed the Beast that I don't know about, let me know. Um, but we're going to encounter lots of gas, so I want a better bow than the one I've got. That's just power one. Bang. Oh! <laughs> hey! I was thinking the one that I wanted to add infinity to from that book, but uh, hey, now I'll be able to give that one, that infinity book, to Nilo Rio. So, that's cool. Uh, we've put this in here, and uh, now I only need one of these. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Now I'll meet you in another.